Hey, Foot Clan, before we start today's show, I want to introduce you to a new sponsor. Well, new to you, not to me. Zycam Nasal All Clear. Listen, this keeps your nose clean, clear, and healthy as part of your daily routine, and it's different because it's easy to use and it's convenient for on the go. Look, we've all dealt with this, but Zycam. This nasal all clear, the swabs, they deliver the triple acting benefit of protecting, cleansing, and soothing your nasal passages. Al, we all need to soothe our nasal passages. This is a drug-free, non-saline-based moisturizing formula, and uh, I like to say I swab it out in the morning. Just swab it out. Just swab it out. Look, it literally allows you to swab it out. I wake up with the dryness due to congestion, and Zycam's nasal all clear just swabs it right out. Just swabs it out. And and like I said, easy to use, convenient for on the go. It's a drug-free, non-saline-based moisturizing formula. And you can swab it out with Zycam's Nasal All Clear. It's available on Amazon. Search for Zycam Nasal All Clear. That's A-L-L-C-L-E-A-R. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Uh, <laughs> welcome in. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh. Welcome into the show, Andy, Mike, and Jason, or some. I some am here. What a Monday! Semblance of of the three of us. What a day to be alive, gentlemen. The birds are chirping. Tweedledee dee. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy for you, Mike. <laughs> Fantasy football. Oh, brother. There's part of me that acknowledges this is why you listen because. Our hearts and our souls are invested in into our leagues, and uh, and then there's part of me that just just wishes none of you wanted a show today. <laughs> How yeah. you doing, Jason? Uh, on a I'm, scale of one to ten. On a scale of one to ten, <laughs> I'm doing all right. I'm, I've gotten back up to about a one. So um, you were in the negative. I was, yeah, I was certainly uh, negative for an update. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I chose to play, uh, long story short, a bunch of t- t- toil and effort, and I uh, I left Mike Davis on the bench. I left James Conner and Raheem Mostert in the lineup. I could have picked anything else than what I did, and I would have won. I didn't win. I lost. Um, also, <laughs> and you lost. You had been losing some weight. I had been losing some weight. I then did my best to undo that last night. <laughs> yeah, you said you had a, a, a very large order from the, uh, the, the local Mexican joint. The Filiberto's 40. The Filiberto's <laughs> 40, as, as we call it. That's that's 100% right. Um, and I don't know if you two gentlemen realize this. So we play in three main leagues together mm-hmm. and, and the fourth with our second dynasty that Andy is not in. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Oh, Mike yes. and I share a team there, oh. and we're on the bye. Yes, we're still friends in that league. Foot Clan, I highly <laughs> recommend getting the bye. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was undefeated. How's your dynasty team, I was Andy? undefeated on the bye. I mean, those are great. Those are great. Um, but in those four leagues, so I, I made the playoffs, all four, uh, the, in the main three. Um, it's not even – Monday Night Football hasn't happened. I'm out. I'm out all three, <laughs> but I'm gone. It's oh, over. man. And that is the first time now in six years that I will not have a championship hey, you got in, one to of live our, for tomorrow in one of our week. main leagues. So I quit. <laughs> yeah, well, last that's, night. That's quite a run, man. Uh, six it, straight years of the three main leagues. Five five straight. Five, so this it, is the sixth, and I will. That's a really good run. Uh, it's Monday, December 14th. We do have a lot to cover, whether we want to or not. And uh, Mike and I were head-to-head in our league of record. Uh, I'm going to lose. Yes, probably. It's the, the, it is, the matchup is not over. I told you I wanted Monday night to matter. It barely matters. I, need oh, little, it, I, I want the world out there. Put your hearts together. I need Lamar under 20 points. Lamar under 20 points, and Mike won't be here tomorrow. That is accurate. But uh, it looked like a blowout. I have 145 points. I was beating Mike into 
submission. Our you, game broke down into a way that what did I relate it to? Oh, like we were taking turns at the dentist. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes, because all yes. my players were in the morning <laughs> games, and my and we have eight. We have nine screens up at uh -huh. the at the office, and I'm scoring points. David Montgomery and every single Kelsey, one of your players went off. Robinson. Uh, uh, DeAndre Hopkins and Mike's watching it all, and he's got nobody going in the morning somehow. So it's I just, had Dalton Schultz. So he he went in, <laughs> he went back into the dentist first, and you could hear the drill. Yes. <laughs> and he's screaming a little bit, and there's pain. Mm -hmm. They didn't numb him up well enough, and he literally gives me the the death line, which is I can't catch you. It's impossible. You win. Which I should have like put on paper and had a notary come and certify that because that would have been great. Stop the count. But when I what, now to be fair, when I said that, Jason, was there any way that I could have possibly come back? No, there was no way. Every single one of your players would have had to get bomb touchdowns over and over. And that's and what. They did. And that's what happened. T.Y. Hilton, Calvin Ridley. Uh, if you Keenan Allen, they just score after score after score. Miles Sanders, Miles Sanders. but never fear, guys, because I have Deontay Johnson in the night game. Oh, oh. so here we are, and I, you know, I came in. I told Mike I've kind of turned the page. I haven't. It was a lie. I lied to Mike this morning. Welcome in Monday Pun Day. <laughs> Oh, yes. You want to take all these, Mike? I can. Take all the good ones. You take the happy ones. Yeah, you take the happy ones. Okay, we will start with Jonathan Yaler. Chase Claystool. No Orleans defense. Oh, that's uh, good. I have to find a good one. Oh, Smiles Sanders. Oh, my gosh. Oh, uh, why don't you take the Deontay one, Andy? Oh, you mean Deontay Dropson? Yeah. Mm, or Drop Dropante Johnson? Drop, Whatever. <laughs> Dropante? Dropson. I don't. I've thought of all of them. Uh, I'll, I'll take this one. Uh, James Goner oh. and Raheem No Start. How about <laughs> Calvin Ridley? Uh, Bio <laughs> Biovane Bernard. That's the best Biovane. one. Biovane. He's got Bio. No, that's that good. Might be the funniest one I've seen. Biovane yeah. Bernard. <laughs> uh, Bory Davis and Weak Elliott. Mm. Mm, yes. Well, I know Brooks got knocked out of the Dynasty League thanks to Weak Elliott. Yeah. Could use that by as well. All right. You can follow the show <laughs> if you want more of this sweet content <laughs> at the FF Ballers on Twitter. Uh, TheFantasyFootballers.com is the website. There, If you go to at the FF Ballers on Twitter, you will find just various uh, memes of Jason slipping out of his chair. Yeah, my cry face meme is <laughs> taking the internet by storm. I may have had a part in that. Yeah. I I regret nothing because it's it's incredible. Yeah, we will get through this, Jason. <laughs> we will get through this uh, because we have to to get paid. All right, <laughs> into the news. Weekly rewind. At this point now, we're focused on championships. That's right. On, yeah. On getting the ones left. Let's focus on the listeners and me. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right. Dynasty League. I'm going to focus on that. How, how, take yeah, uh, one Jason, second. We're, we're friends again. How, on... Yes, in the Dynasty League, yes. we're best friends. Um, how good <laughs> would it feel to be Mike right now? I mean, I would, I'm just thinking like. See, I, just, I just am holding on to the miraculous hope that he feels the opposite tomorrow. Oh. Just and, uh, in it, case. Like, we start the game off, Lamar. Bomb touchdown. But it, and it's great. And then all of a sudden, nothing from then on out. Yeah, I was, I was going to start with the pick. Yeah, if he, start, then, if he starts then, with a pick, I will, I will tilt into a, a turtle shell immediately. Follow along. Follow along for my 5% chance. Sure. All right, the Dolphins placed Miles Gaskin on the COVID list. We knew that before Sunday. It ended up being DeAndre Washington. He was the starter. He got most of the first and second down work. Patrick Laird was in on third down. And, uh, you know, I, I got to say, I'm pretty impressed with the Dolphins' performance on Sunday. They're missing their Very. top five or six pass catchers, and they were missing their top three running backs, and they still took the Chiefs to the brink. Huge yes. game from Tua. Very impressive. Uh, I believe that their playoff chances go uh, up dramatically 
Well, they're they're fighting with, you know, like Baltimore. So we'll see what happens tonight. David Johnson was placed on the COVID list. We knew that before Sunday. This one stunk. Yeah. 49ers wide receiver D broke Samuel exited early with a hamstring injury and did not return. It was instantaneous. Yeah, it was he, yeah, it was like the I think the second, first, first or second first or offensive second play. play was uh to Debo and he looked great, got around the corner, was running like a man, and uh then he was like, Oh then, I, and then he was, I ran too hard. But then he was running like one of us. Yeah. Uh you saw the the hitch and the giddy up immediately. And, Devastating. And then he slammed the helmet and you went, Oh, that's a that's a game ender. Yep, yep. Fantasy football on display. Really disappointing. He was my start of the week. Great matchup. Ayuk had a huge game after Debo left. Mike Williams exited with a back injury. He's always hurt, too. Yeah. Noah Fant exited early. Always hurt. Dealing with an illness, they said. Matthew Stafford left hurt. Stafford Alex got crumpled up. Yeah. You know he's real hurt when he leaves because yes. he just doesn't leave. Alex Smith, calf strain. He left early. Dwayne Haskins came back in. I think it's been, what, four four troubling weeks for McLaurin and less confidence than ever in what that offense can do with him right now. Brandon Allen did not return. Bone bruise, Bengals quarterback. And there you go. Yep. So um, we have studs and duds to talk about today. So I'm going to push this button. <laughs> <laughs> this week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. All right, I mentioned it before, Tua. Tua had a huge game, 316 and two. Uh, and ran for one, uh, uh, six for 24 on the ground. Thank you. Uh, fancy playoffs next week, New England. No, no, thank you. No England. No, there yeah, is no, no confidence in that. Aaron Rodgers leads the NFL, 39 passing touchdowns, four picks. Is that a good ratio, 39 to four? He has 39? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, Holy he's good. crap. And he throws it to that Adams guy, and then they, um, they always score. Adams is a real delight to have in your fantasy <laughs> leagues. I highly recommend it. I feel like somehow as his skill has ascended to maybe the best in the league, he's also become larger, but not just like muscles, but also like taller and faster. Like he just looks like a man among boys. I think it's just his presence. Has his grown. presence. Yeah. 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 Uh, he's, he's, he's a man. I may have to, we may need to move that drop. Uh, Drew Locke. Oh, Mr. Oh. Irresponsible. 21 for 27, 280, and 4. It was the worst <laughs> he was 21 great. for 27 for 280 uh, and 4 I've ever seen because that stat line is perfection. He was – Yeah, that's, that's amazing. That's a phenomenal, perfect stat line. And, you know, watching the game, it did not feel like that, but maybe that's the preconceived notions of uh, his irresponsibility. Trubisky. 24 for 33, three touchdowns, 267 through the air. They dominated Houston mm -hmm. thoroughly. Derek Carr, 31 for 45, 316 and two, ran for one as well. Oh, the classic Carr. It's a pretty crazy week. Week 14 was, was pretty crazy. But think about that when you're talking about four of these top five options were Carr, Drew Locke, Trubisky, and Tua. And, I, I mean, that's just. That's the way everyone saw it going, right? Yeah. Yeah, and Russell Wilson, he had a good game too. Fine. Well, that one we Which saw is nice. Uh, 36 passing touchdowns, a career high for him. Jalen Hurts? Man. 167-1, and one, but the bigger story, 18 carries, 106 yards on the ground. Jalen Hurts was uh, – this is exactly what you wanted to see for fantasy. This is why we said, you know, yes, pick up Jalen Hurts in the hope that you can play him the following week because you can't – you can't have the the confidence if you have the swag uh, to put Jalen Hurts in and with ever with, with never seeing him against, against the, the New, against the New Orleans Saints, then a, a tip of the hat to you for making a tremendous call. But now uh, Jalen Hurts is is the streamer for next week. Yeah, in Arizona and Dallas as yeah. the next two weeks. It's mean, beautiful. Those I can't even matches. think about that game. I can't think about that game because of that Miles Sanders run. It was delightful yeah i am miles sanders has had two good games this year they've both been against me i <laughs> his, hate him his great games have been against but you. the best part of it is both of the games that miles sanders blew up in pittsburgh steelers 
New Orleans Saints rushing defense. And it was really one run again. Yes, it, it, yes, which is the, the aside knife, from knife Aside twist. from the, the huge touchdown run, Miles Sanders was very pedestrian. Congrats to all of you who had Miles Sanders and had the guts to play him. I know Mike yes. was tilting even yes. on playing him that morning. Up, Can you imagine No, if you had benched Miles Sanders? No, and up to the moment, Foot Clan, I, I, like, if you're out there and you benched Miles Sanders for an option that – I – do not blame you in the slightest. It, my, here were, here's where my playoff tilt was. I had picked up Chad Hansen from the Houston Texans uh, because Brandon Cooks was out. And I was, I was legitimately thinking about playing Jamal Adams and Chad Hansen and putting Miles Sanders on my bench. That's how freaked out by the matchup I was. And it turned into, I can't lose with Miles Sanders on my bench. That was the only reason why... I played him, so I all the fear out there. I, I, <laughs> I had an equal dose of it. Taysom Hill ended up with a, a good game, two ninety one and two, and he finally threw the ball to Alvin Kamara. Well, that's nice of him. Yes, probably helped his numbers. Yeah, he'd be like, hey Taysom, you know you get credit for that, right? You get. He's like, wait a minute, but he's a running back. <laughs> I didn't think I could throw to him. All right, running back studs, couple starts of the week. Jonathan Taylor, David Montgomery, huge games. Montgomery only had eleven carries in a game where they blew them out and he had a 113 and one including a huge touchdown he only needed one carry yeah, yeah. jonathan taylor 20 for 150 and two oh, baby his last three games he's the running back 13 three and two so he has been uh he has been playing to his schedule perfectly he seems to finally have a rhythm with the offensive line something he hadn't been able to do naeem hines very limited snaps in this game and we talked about Miles Sanders. Now Derek Yeti himself. Oh, the transformation 20, is complete. Twenty six for two fifteen and two. He made up for lost time. Lost time was last week. Found time was this week. <laughs> he is actually he only needs to average I know Jason, don't don't participate in this. But <laughs> take out your earbuds if you need to. Uh, because this was your demise. You uh. got Yetied. If I had Christian McCaffrey, no, I, I, there's <laughs> no I lost by six points we with don't. Mike Davis on the bench. Well uh yeah, 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 we know. It sucks. <laughs> Derrick Henry can run for 2,000 yards if he averages 156 over the last three weeks. He will. He might break the record. Yeah. So, pretty, pretty, pretty good for mm -hmm. Derrick Henry, which makes the matchups like the Detroit oh. matchup, which is great. It makes it more difficult when you see, like, the Tannehill decision in, in coming weeks if you know what this team's going to be about. I think Tannehill's a good start. It's just you kind of understand what sure. the situation is. All right, Mike Davis. Okay, this is not Jason's part of the show. Talk to me about Mike Davis, Mike. No, so, I will not. So Mike Davis, and uh, to to uh, kind of echo Jason's feeling before the matchup. I mean, like the the results say that playing Mike Davis was the right call, and and not playing Raheem Mostert was the right call but I mean things had trended poor they were trending poorly for Mike Davis so he seemed like he had it lost his gummy berry juice where he was losing his powers and I mean his his line is really not that impressive 11 for 51 on the ground 5 for 42 like that's fine but two touchdowns. Touchdowns is the difference maker always for fantasy football. No question. Austin Eckler was involved through and through. Nine targets, nine catches, 15 rushing attempts. Huge game. I love Justin Herbert. That Justin Herbert knows is that he needs to get the ball to Eckler. And then Alvin Kamara. I don't know if this is a result of, of Taysom Hill being smarter. I don't know if it's a result of Kamara being healthier. Ten targets, seven catches, 44 yards. Had a touchdown on the ground. Nice to see. I'm sure you played him, so he actually performed for you. Yes. Uh, huge wide receiver days. Tyree Kill, another two touchdowns. Stephon Diggs, at one point in the game last night, and he went 10 for 130 and one, almost won the game for Jason in a way that probably added, almost. Almost. added to the, the bill for the, there was the a, Mexican food. There was a deep bomb at the end of the game that was it was like it won you it. I was like eh, there's no way they're not even passing anymore and then I look at Diggs he's on the left they drop back he bombs it to Diggs I stand up I scream I'm like go go and he drops it and I threw something on the ground and stormed out after that 
and I didn't see anything else in the game. Remember, remember, like a week or two ago, you said how you were trying to be dignified. In I defeat? did remember that. I thought about that in the shower this morning. I was trying, and I was, and I thought this is Footlane. This is where I got. I realized I need to have more grace when I see someone lose. Uh, and at tilt a sport themselves. until I need to have grace for them because I think I'm better than that. I am not better than that. <laughs> I've got to work on it. Uh, yeah, this is called rebound tilt. After you made that proclamation, this is the worst I've ever seen you. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> there was a point in the game against the Pittsburgh defense where Stephon Diggs could do whatever he wanted to do. It didn't matter. I mean, they just went to him over and over and over and over again. And he was dominating. So leads the NFL in receptions, a complete machine. All right, he's fully 100% on fire. Uh, big part of Mike's victory. Seriously, what? Boom shakalaka! T.Y. Hilton, seven targets, five for 86 and two. Does T.Y. Hilton know that like there were a lot of games before the last couple of weeks? Uh, that no. he could he could have showed up like this. T. Y. Houston next week. Oh, oh, oh yeah. I, what happened? Well, here just to give you an idea of what he's doing. The last three games where he is, uh, I mean, he's totaled 277 yards and four touchdowns and 17 receptions. That would be a 16 game pace of 1500 yards and 21 touchdowns. That is. Uh, Levels of T.Y. Hilton we haven't seen since. That's Andrew. high T. That's high T.Y., <laughs> yeah. That's not a low T. We had gotten low T.Y. Yeah, we did. For two years. He may have saw a physician. Maybe uh, Von Miller uh, coming out and saying, like, he doesn't think Andrew Luck is done. Got T.Y. Hilton remembering <laughs> the good old days. I don't know. I don't know. It's incredible, though, because next week he's a must start mm -hmm. against Houston. I call it start of the week. You can have it, Jason. You can have it, yeah. Uh, Allen Robinson, 13 targets from Trubisky. He's been kind of resurrected by Trubisky. Mm -hmm. uh, he is a he's getting the red zone targets. Yep, and he's going to be a great play through the playoffs. Calvin Ridley, Devontae Adams, A.J. Brown, you expect to be, expect a big things, got big things from them. K.J. Hamler, two for 86 and two. Nothing you can do with that. No, other three than, targets. Yeah, I mean, other than say he's a good player and he's, he's probably right. going to be a – Kind of a sneaky player over the next couple of years if they figure things out on offense. Nelson Aguilar, DeAndre Hopkins, Brandon Ayuk, 16 Ayukin. targets for Brandon Ayuk. And what are the odds that Debo's back next week? I would put them very low. Very low. So Ayuk I, could be a league winner too. Also, to I, I know you mentioned Nelson Aguilar, but he was so impressive to me because it, this was a little different. This was like more possession-y, more, you know, it was 11 targets, nine receptions. He was just a huge, huge part of the offense through and through. On the course of the season, he's been very good, but it's all been touchdown-based. You know, he, he ends up to find find the end zone. But, I, you know, I think we got to give him his credit, especially coming up with the Los Angeles Chargers, probably a, a, a good uh, pickup. All right, before we talk about the tight end studs, we want to uh, tell you tell you about a new podcast. I want to tell you about a new podcast. I Jason. am listening. Uh, it's the Raising a Pro podcast, and it fits right in for the ultimate football fan. Annie Apple, a journalist, storyteller, and uh, the mom of Eli Apple, cornerback Eli Apple, hosts Raising a Pro. It's a brand new podcast from Audio Boom. Each week, uh, she takes you beyond the gridiron to give you an intimate look at your favorite athletes, a glimpse through their eyes, and the experiences that helped shape them, for example. Joe Burrow, you'll hear the story of Joe Burrow through the eyes of his mom, Robin, number one overall pick. You hear about Miles Garrett, Malcolm Jenkins, and uh, this, this sounds pretty interesting. Raising a Pro is out right now. New episodes each and every Friday. Be sure to listen and subscribe to Raising a Pro on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And Foot Clan, you know this, but when you are confident, you do not settle for anything less then 100. Are you, mm -hmm. are you the kind of person who takes everything up to 100? You want to take you your... You take your tilt up to 100? Oh, oh. you know it. <laughs> you want to take your hair game up to 100? Head and Shoulders gives you up to 100% dandruff protection. That means if you use it regularly, you can prevent up to 100% of visible flakes. Get that hair that looks 100% amazing. And like, What do you take up to 100? I know that I... I took my trash talk up to 100 last night. I took my Twitter game up to 100. And our company Slack took uh, volatility 
<laughs> things that can't be said on this podcast. Up, up to, to 100. They were taking up to 100 last night. Oh, man, I mean, T.Y. Hilton taking it up to 100. Oh, gosh. So many hundreds. Miles Sanders, 100. <laughs> How you feeling, uh, man? Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson about to take it up to 100 no. as well. Take it up to 10. Absolutely. And if you want to take your hair up to 100, remember, take it up to 100 with head and shoulders. It is available online at Walmart. I don't even know what happened at Jason's house last night. <laughs> I don't know what happened for hours last night. But if the police broke in mm. and hauled them off, I, I'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. We get it. We knew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. Uh, tight end studs. Kelsey is unbelievable. He leads all pass catchers with 1,250 yards. That's more than Metcalf. That's more than Tyreek. He is. But. Yeah. But Andy, yeah. he's a tight end. No, no, no. He is a Greek god. <laughs> he is Zeus. He's I mean, you eight for 136. You have to imagine at this point, just a handful of games left, There, Mahomes will actively try to make him lead the league yes. in receiving yards. Yeah. Just yeah. to be another you know, check mark on this Hall of Fame career. Yeah, he is going after the tight end rec uh, receiving yards record. Um I agree with you, Mike, which makes you knocking me and Travis Kelsey out of the playoffs all the more painful. Mike Gesicki, six for or five for sixty five and two. Hurt his arm at the end of this game. He's been on fire lately. Mm -hmm. Herb Smith ended up four for sixty three. Oh, big Herb. Big Herb. Rudolph was out of this game. And we didn't see a lot of Herb until the second half, and then he he came uh came up with four catches. Hawkinson, six for forty three and a touchdown, been very reliable, very consistent every Eleven week. Eleven targets. And Robert Tunyon back into the end zone again. It's kind of his thing. Yeah, it's Roger's thing too. They both have a thing, and it's in the end zone. Yep. All right, uh, let's let's move forward to a. Oh, I'm so excited! This is. <laughs> Can we go to Jason's solo cam here? Yeah. Thank you very much. Stinkers of the week, presented by Odor Eaters and Jason. <laughs> also presented by me. Uh, You're sponsoring the segment today? I am helping. I mean, Odor Eaters are awesome. I'm awesome. I'm going to help sponsor this segment because um, you, I, on a scale I of- wanna, I want to I wanna celebrate the awful. That's what I'm here to do today. On a scale of like uh, this moment compared to the Pea River moment from last year, which was last year. You, you Remember you were the- Yeah. You were destroyed? Oh, yeah. No, hol I remember. Hollow we, we just watched a great yeah. replay of that on Wednesday. Um, which one's worse? Yeah, like comparatively speaking. Like if you were to write a book, which chapter is like kind of the climax of pain? Well, it, I, it, it is, is different because this one was on me. Last year was on mm. Philip Rivers. So my, my, right. I, I limit how much I'm willing to hate myself. Um, you know, and, uh, but I had no limit for Rivers. <laughs> So, you know, I was allowed to really uh, fire hose uh, my disdain towards Philip Rivers. And on myself, I've got to, you know, I've got to show some grace. So. <laughs> you got to draw a line in the sand. Yeah. Matt Ryan. I mean, this we said it. Rulio 11. No Julio, no Matt Ryan. He mm -hmm. was bad. 224 and one, three picks. Ew, ew. Which it makes no logical sense because Calvin Ridley is awesome. And had a great game. And had a great game. Calvin Ridley's an excellent wide receiver. I mean, he Calvin Ridley is jumping into the elite tier for yes, uh, for, for wide Super. receivers and for for fantasy players. And Matt Ryan just can't get it. It is done. it is like a a car engine, right? You think that you have most of the parts there and one part's missing and you'll be fine. And that's not how it works with a car. And it doesn't <laughs> work that way with Matt Ryan. It's like third down conversions, moving the ball down the field. Mm. Something is missing from the process. Having the ball not be intercepted, he right. needs Julio Jones. Yeah, you can't get by targeting Powell and Gage and yeah, Cam Newton. We talked about it uh, the Thursday night game. He 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 has a stat line that looks like it's from like a couple possessions in the first quarter. Stat line from like the 1920s football, right? <laughs> exactly. Where to throw it? They would like two. Two, two hand hander, push. yeah, yeah. The 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 ice bowl. Like he uh, threw for 119 yards, career record. <laughs> Seven rushing attempts, 16 yards. Daniel Fumble Jones was on full display. Came back, shouldn't have. Apparently, mm. yeah. This I mean, was as bad as it gets against an Arizona defense that was 
not good. Daniel Jones' best attribute, not just for fantasy, certainly for fantasy, but his best attribute in real life is his uh, athleticism, his ability to scramble, get outside the pocket, run. You know, you look on the course of the season and he's six carries, nine carries, six carries, just tons of yards. He had zero carries for zero yards because the hamstring issue is an issue. And he's like, oh, I could just stand in the pocket and throw it. No, you can't. <laughs> no, no, you cannot. Running back stinkers. Now, this is not a complete stinker, but he's a name worth talking about because of what happened. Aaron Jones was 15 for 69. No touchdowns, three targets, two catches, six yards. Now, there were huge expectations against this Detroit rushing defense. Mm -hmm. uh, he had 43 fantasy points against them in week two. So, last year, five games with less than seven points, but five 20-plus point games for Aaron Jones. Boom bust. Finished, what, running back two or three last mm -hmm. year? Three, I believe. Uh, this year, zero games, less than seven points, but only two 20-plus point games. So, touchdown regression was a theme for Aaron Jones coming into the season. We know the talent is there, but you've no. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is leading the league in touchdown passes. So Aaron Jones did not give you a week winning week this week. Yeah, but he was he's a piece where if he was on your roster, you still easily could have won with him. He was a top 24 running back so far barring tonight's game. It was disappointing, certainly. Um but hopefully you got into the next round and you just keep playing him so that you can get those big multi-touchdown games that he he does from time to time. All right, uh talk to me about James Conner. No. <laughs> Is that a full year? Uh, I'm out. You might talk to him. I, w what has happened to the Pittsburgh running game? There is none. I have. I don't know. It's gone. Yeah. It's they, gone, and, and, and let's just use our eyeballs. It's gone. Right. It's not just choice. It is choice because they. Mike Tomlin watches James Conner and then goes, like, he has no burst to start the run. Yeah. This is not a situation where you pick up speed, right? Like, there are certain running backs where it's like, okay, get him ahead of speed, and then they do something. He just seems kind of the same speed. It's just wild. I mean, you look at the way that the, the season started for James Conner, where through week six, in his first five games, he had over 100 rushing yards three times. Yeah, he's. I feel like he's been good on the season. Obviously, we... You know, we don't know the specifics of how everybody comes back from uh, COVID, right. and this sure. is the first time we saw him back. He didn't look how he looked pre um, going on the COVID IR. So, uh, there, you know, there there could be some of that. But in addition to Connor's uh, lackadaisical display, is the offensive line woes as well. This offensive line who doesn't let Big Ben get sacked, has nothing to do with them. That has to do with Big Ben grabbing the ball, throwing it. Grabbing the ball, and you just can't sack someone doing that. But it seems like defenses have now keyed in on the Pittsburgh Steelers knowing, okay, he's going to get rid of the ball immediately, so we're going to play a different style of defense, and you just can't run the, the football. They've been them. under 20 points for three straight weeks, and then three of the last four Connor games. 9 for 22, 13 for 36, 10 for 18. Oh, and he had a fumble in this game. And it's what you're saying. Like, Big Ben has a lot of uh, freedom at the line of scrimmage. And it's a super quick trigger right now to abandon the run entirely for the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, let me ask you this, Chase. Okay. Assuming that people won with James Conner. Now, I'm not talking to you. Obviously. Hard to assume. But, yeah. Next week is the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals are not as bad a rush defense as you think when you think okay. about the dumpster fire of the Bengals' season and, and losing all their key pieces. Um, I, I think you you probably try to look for a pivot because if, if this is the floor, then the floor is not having oh, a player in your this lineup. This is the float. Yeah. yeah, that was bad. Bad, bad. Uh, <laughs> that whole game. Yeah. Problems. Uh, Josh Jacobs. 13 for 49 on the ground, five targets, three for 25 through the air. He was, he's too busy trying to come up with comedy bits. Dude, he Hilarious. He deserves. <laughs> a, You're not happy with him? He, he, no, he deserves a label, uh, like a like a scarlet letter. For <laughs> not doing, a my guy label? <laughs> for doing that to, I mean, in, in, if you're unaware, in, the, in those all important, you know, hour and a half, two hours leading up to 
your kickoff, to your Sunday morning, to set in your lineups. You're looking at all the news coming out, and all of a sudden, he tweets out or, or Instagrams that he's not going to play with three laugh emojis, and he's like, you know, I'm not playing today. And Adam Schefter's retweeting it. I mean, it goes goes fire, and it's one of those things where it's like, oh, no, you know, it's a Clyde Edwards-Alaire situation where he's active but not going to play. He was trolling people with that message. Or what? was he? Or what? Because did he actually play? Yes, he played. <laughs> what? I mean, 16, it's just a 16 opportunity. I'm just going to call it how it is. That's a jerk move. I just think it's a jerk Let, move. I don't like him. Can I Can I play <laughs> devil's advocate? Play, yes. Try to convince me to like Josh Jacobs now. I think that players, mm. and this is something we've, we've spoken out against uh, for the last five years. Players get DMs. Players get messages. Players get be talk to I'm sure all week long Josh Jacobs was was told are you playing are you playing yeah. my fantasy team are you playing are you playing yeah. are you playing and um uh, and and he's in a position where he doesn't care about your fantasy team nor and should he, he should not and and he comes out and he decides to take a shot across the bow with some you know smiley some faces and yep. some jokes and some trolling and it's not nice, but I get it from the player perspective if that's what he receives. I I, I also understand, and which a reminder, never tag a player. Don't tag. Never players. tag a player. Like, tag a player, and be like, dude, great game. Like, but never tag a player something negative for your fantasy football team because they they do not care and they should not care. But what was wild about uh, Sunday is Josh Jacobs didn't care about your fantasy team and he didn't care about the Las Vegas Raiders either. That was another shot at Josh Jacobs. Well, 13 for 49. Uh, they fired their defensive coordinator today. Okay. Makes sense. <laughs> Maybe they should have spent some of the Marcus Mariota money on some defensive players. Oh. What, do you think, what do you think about that? All right, Todd Gurley, 6 for 19, 2 for 12 through the air. I mean, if you played Doug, Todd Gurley this week. You were desperate. Yeah, that, I mean, we we I said mean, cut him uh, on yeah. the waiver wire show. and it, You should have. Yeah. It would have made the decision easier. <laughs> Landmine. Oh, hey. This segment has one thing. Like, a bunch of players have one thing in common in uh, this whole segment. Were they all started over Mike Davis? Uh, for your team, yes. For my team? Raheem Mostert. 14 carries. Okay. And four targets. Yeah. Okay. Seven, I mean, that, I mean, that's nice. That's... Sorry, Jason. It's That's really not painful. that bad of a game. It, it really was. wasn't that bad of a game. Compared to Mike Davis, it was <laughs> trash. Yeah. I just needed six more points. That's I just, I just needed. How much were you rooting? So last if night. James Conner scores like seven no, points. No, no, no. We I know win. math. We know the math. But <laughs> <laughs> he just had buttered the mic. Um, listen, how oh, much of last yeah. night were you rooting to win and how much were you rooting it for for you to lose by more than the gap between Mostert and Davis? It, it's there is absolutely no recollection of last night. Um, I, 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 I was turned off. Um, so the, there was no rooting in anything. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Danger. Yeah. <laughs> Wayne Gallman, twelve for fifty-seven. The magic. Uh, Bruce Wayne. Bruce Wayne. Yeah. And then Latavius Murray was irrelevant. Five touches. Yep. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there, everything ties back to Jason right now because he's got it in the dynasty playoffs. He just had player after player after player go down. Found out Fournette was inactive, which shouldn't really matter to most teams, <laughs> but it did matter to Jason because of injuries. David Johnson had been put on the COVID list, and he ends up having to start Latavius Murray and Boston Scott in the league. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't win. <laughs> no. That was the champ champ league. Uh, congratulations, oh, man. Champ, guys. champ champ is over. Champ 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 cannot happen. All right, and then uh, let me ask let me ask a, another person that didn't win in all their leagues, Brooks. <laughs> yeah, you had a very promising start oh, to no. the dynasty league as well. How are you feeling today? I'm all right. You're all right. Just Bro all right. Yeah. Look, when when you're when people call you Sir Drips a lot because you're just swimming in in uh, high priced you, art jewelry all the time yeah. and jewelry, like you you can bounce. He's back. into art too. Oh yeah, anything that's of value he collects. Yeah. Does he have a bunch of those like the glass sculptures that sit on the pedestal? You know those, those are they super expensive? Yeah, Andy? they're yeah. super then expensive. Yes, he has like them. Fabergé eggs. I've never seen so many Fabergé eggs in my life. Brooks pays 
a has, lot for private school for his kids, and he doesn't even have any kids. That's right. He just <laughs> he wants to support. He wants to support certain yeah. schools he believes in because yeah. education and the children are the future. He, even, yeah, he is a philanthropist. Yeah. That's yeah. nice. It makes me feel good. Yeah, yeah that what's, level what's of Scrooge crazy, McDuck. What's crazy is that the, oh, he keeps all the Fabergé eggs in a Fabergé egg room. You walk yes, into yes. the egg. It's a really oh, impressive. It's an egg-shaped room. It's an egg-shaped room. That's right. Wow. See, we were confused when you and your uh, fiance got that place. You had a couple extra bedrooms, but now the Fabergé eggs makes yes, sense. Yes, yes. So you're doing okay, though, because of all of your wealth? Exactly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> good lesson here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. A good lesson for life. <laughs> money. For, for Glenn, if you're sad, just get a bunch of money. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh, thank you for that hot tip there, Judge Giamatti. Mo money, no problems. <laughs> this is what Brooks That's says. That's the famous saying. <laughs> yes. I remember that one. All right, wide receivers that were disappointing. I think the uh, big one, Thielen and Jefferson against yeah. a Tampa Bay secondary that had been bleeding points combined for seven catches. They both had 39 yards, no touchdowns. I mean, there was someone on the Sunday Live who was trying to ask which one of those two players to start. My advice was make sure you get both of them in your lineup. Oh no! And Ugh. I mean, I, it's it's unbelievable because those guys had been on fire. Kirk Cousins had been on fire, and Tampa Bay has been literally the worst against wide receivers uh, over the last five weeks. And it it was really shocking. And it was a weird game plan that they came out with. If you if you watched that game, the first quarter was dominated by Minnesota. Mm -hmm. You might not think that because of the result. But they basically had one drive that lasted the whole quarter, all runs, no passes, and then everything, and then it was like, well, that was our one idea for this game. We got nothing else. And then the whole, all the wheels fell off. Yeah, this was, that was hugely disappointing. Robert Woods, five for 32. Deontay Johnson, the two drops. What? Look, I have Deontay Johnson in two important leagues. One that's now important. One that was important. Uh. I need him. Right. They need him. Yeah. I, I think that last night was partially submarine by, look, what do you do? It, it, Mike Tomlin, we know he's very responsible. Mm -hmm. And when you come out and say, if you drop passes, I'm going to put someone into the game that doesn't, and then you drop passes, he can't not follow through with his word on that. Right. Or else, I mean, it was almost he set the table for it, right? Even before our matchup, Mike, you know, things were looking okay, and I'm like, hey, listen. Deontay could get benched tonight. Now, mm -hmm. it seemed outlandish. I'm right. like, but if he drops the first pass or two, you're not going to see him, and that's exactly what happened. Has the Jets next week. He is their most explosive player with the ball in his hands. Came back into the game, didn't drop any more passes in the second half. What are you doing with him? Because um, he could disappear in the middle I'm of a game. I'm playing him. Yeah, I, I think so. It's it's not the Jets. I believe it's the Bengals. Oh, it's the Bengals. oh I'm sorry. Yeah. I was, yeah, but, um, yeah I, I, I think... That at the end of the day, this is real football that really matters, and they need to win games, and he's their best wide receiver. It stinks that he's having this uh, mental lapse in catches, but I, he's he should be back out there. And I think that if for some reason there was a change, we would hear about it before Sunday. If, we did, if there hasn't been a declaration that James Washington's getting the start, uh, then, then I will – continue to play T.Y. Hilton against Houston or Deontay Johnson against Cincinnati I would have to go T.Y. Hilton there yeah right yeah, yeah I mean he's on fire he's just been too good lately and you don't have the possibility of him just getting benched Chase Claypool just three for 15 his last three weeks the wide receiver 38 75 and 82 it's going to throw into question his viability to play him next week yeah, and it's fair. I mean, he is the deep play guy. It, the, there was still a couple shots thrown deep that, that Claypool was not able to come down with. But like, he's the big play guy, and, yep. they're, and they're doing quick line of scrimmage types the, of passes, so that, that kind of rules Claypool out. This is a Steelers problem. Um, do you guys realize how horrifically bad the Steelers have been the last three weeks? They're, they were they – were, um, hidden behind their 10 and 0 record. Right. But the last 3 weeks they have yet to score 20 points in a game. I mean that's crazy. 19 points, 17 points, 15 points. 
That's like, I mean, what are the Jets scoring? <laughs> right. <laughs> it, yeah, their their offense is in it's trouble right now. There's there's bizarre. talk of, uh, I mean, he's he's throwing the ball super fast. His knee. There's concern around the organization about his knee being healthy. Um. Yeah, it's kind of falling apart over this mm -hmm. this second half right now, and it's validating those that thought the Steelers were a little overrated. They've got injuries on defense right now, changing the way that they win. They're going to have to score a little bit more. And uh, Terry McLaurin, two for 24. Mm -hmm. He dropped from 14 points per game to 8.6 per games after, after uh, Alex Smith took over in week 10. It's been pretty bad for McLaurin, and you have Seattle next week. I just don't know if I feel confident playing him. Well, and you don't even know who the quarterback yeah, is. Yeah, right? is it going to be Haskins? Is it going to be Alex Smith? That, that'll be a tough decision for Terry next week. Godwin, Evans, and really uh, Antonio Brown didn't have an impressive game either. Yeah, Scotty Miller stole the stole the touchdown. That's yeah, Gronk got a touchdown. Um, but yeah, it, it it's really difficult when there are that many pieces. When Gronk can and Scotty Miller can and all three of these wide receivers can, very difficult to lean on one. Yeah, I'm gonna give you some more sadness, Jason. Tyler Lockett, five for fifty two. Since week eight, which was a 200-yard game against Arizona, he is averaging 8.3 fantasy points per game, same, been, as, same as K.J. Hamlin. He's been in my lineup every <laughs> single one of those, and, and it's one of those things where most weeks he doesn't completely destroy you, like 60 yards, 50 yards, Right. but it stinks. And, and it, it, watching the games are really frustrating because – for some reason, he's he's disappeared. I, I completely understand him becoming the number two target. Uh, DK Metcalf said, look at me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm the number one here. And and that's fine. But, um, you know, just watching the the plays break down and seeing David Moore and Swain and, you know, it's Tyler Lockett is just in the fold right now of a bunch of people. Uh, Corey Davis, three for 34. DJ Chark, two for 16. Marvin Jones, four for 48. The Corey Davis line is crazy disappointing with the matchup against Jacksonville. Yeah. And but, yeah, and then again, the transformation is complete. Derrick Henry will be terrifying everyone in his path. Two boom games on the year for Chark, otherwise only catching 55% of his targets. I'm not pushing the button for that. Everyone else, <laughs> uh, you know, Gardner came back into this game. He's got Baltimore next week. DJ Chark needs to be – Baltimore, Chicago to end the year. F say farewell. Yep. Release him into the waiver pool. That is correct. Uh, it's disappointing games at the tight end position. Evan Ingram, two catches. Eric All Ebron, two them. catches. Derek, uh, Dallas Goddard, four for 43. Hayden Hurst, one for seven. Jordan Reed, two for 13. And Trey Goose, Trey Burton with – Who uh, had a good – I mean, it's just it's the tight end position. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, ah. Yeah, stinkers of the week presented by Odor Eaters. <laughs> odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. Look, these people stink, but at least I don't have stinky feet. That's right. That's right. We want to thank Pristine Auction and Allen Robinson signed jersey yesterday, $62. He is such a good player. He is elite. Yeah. So uh, 62 bucks. Check out the hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. You can grab a Christmas gift right now, pristineauction.com. Use code BALLERS to get a $10 credit well i think we're done tilting on air jason take us away i will uh continue to tilt but off air thank you for being part of this let's go get those hashtag foot clan <laughs> titles now we'll see you tomorrow everybody goodbye Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.